Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to calculate the moment of, of inertia or the second moment of area of a semicircle. We've already got the diagram up and we're going to try to integrate over that and we'll see in just a moment why. And just for our benefit, because this is quite a difficult, difficult integral, we've put the integral solution that we know we're going to encounter right here on the board. Also, we realize that the circle can be defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, r being the radius of the circle. So we can calculate x to be equal to the square root of r squared minus y squared. And the small little area element is going to be equal to the length times the width. The length is going to be twice x, the distance from the y-axis to the circle, twice x times the width, which is a small dy. The distance to the little strip is going to be y. And we know that the moment of inertia, by definition, moment of inertia is going to be equal to mr squared, or it's going to be equal to ar squared, depending upon if we're going to use mass or area. In this case, we'll use area. So we can say the moment of inertia, the di, for that small little strip right here, a distance y away from the x-axis, because it is going to be relative to the x-axis, is going to be equal to, let's see here, the area, that's going to be a dA, times the distance squared, which is times y squared. And of course, the dA can be written as 2x dy, so this is equal to 2x dy times y squared. In order to integrate that, we must make sure that we write this as a single integral. It has to be a y, so we replace x by what x is equal to in terms of y. So this can be written as 2 times the square root of r squared minus y squared times y squared times dy. And notice, that's why we need to have that integral up there. Now we can integrate. i is going to be equal to the sum of all the little di's from r equals 0 to r equals r, so from y equals 0 to y equals r in the way, and that's going to be equal to, we can pull out a 2, 2 times the integral of the square root of r squared minus y squared, y squared dy from y equals 0 to y equals r. And now we can simply plop down the solution to the integral because otherwise it would be a lot of work to try and get that. So this is equal to 2 times we have a minus y over 4 times the square root of r squared minus y squared, and the quantity inside there to the third power, plus r squared over 8 times, here we have y times the square root of r squared minus y squared, and then we have plus r squared times the inverse sign of y over r. And the whole thing evaluated from 0 to r, and don't forget that the whole, let's see, we need one more bracket here, and the whole result here must, must be multiplied times 2, because we have a 2 coming from there as well. So what happens when we plug in these values? When we plug in the upper limit, plug in the r over here, we have r squared minus r squared, this, this goes to 0. We have an r squared minus r squared, this goes to 0, and here we have an r divided by r, which is 1, and the arc sine of 1 would be 90 degrees or pi over 2. So we can already plug in the upper limit, and we get the following. This is equal to 2 times, so we get a 0 term there, plus a 0 term there, plus r squared over 8, times r squared times the inverse sine of r over r. That would be 1, and we can solve for that. And then we have to subtract from that everything when we plug in a 0. So when we plug in a 0, we get, well, when we plug in a 0 for y, we get 0 for this. Here when we plug in 0 for y, we get 0 for this. And here, when we plug 0 for y, the arc sine of 0, well, that's going to give you 0 as well. So we have, here we have plus r squared over 8 times r squared times the inverse sine of 
0 over r. So you can see where the last 0 came from. So all these terms go to 0. These terms go to 0. This is the only surviving term. So now let's plug in what we have. So this is equal to 2 times r squared over 8. That would be 1 quarter r squared times r squared, which is r to the fourth. And let's see here. Then we have the arc sine of r over r, which is the arc sine of 1, which is pi over 2 times pi over 2, which is equal to 1 8 pi r to the fourth. And this is indeed the moment of inertia of a semicircle when the moment of inertia is referenced to the x-axis when the semicircle sits on the x-axis like that. Another way of writing it is to realize that the area of a semicircle is equal to 1 half pi r squared. So when we pull out a 1 half pi r squared, this is equal to 1 half pi r squared. And what we have left would be 1 quarter r to the fourth. 1 quarter, well, actually r squared, because we already pulled out an r squared. And this is equal to the area of the semicircle. So this can be written as 1 quarter, the area of the semicircle, times r squared. And here's another way of writing the moment of inertia or the second moment of area for a semicircle. If we had mass, it would be 1 quarter mr squared, or we can use the area 1 quarter a r squared. And that's how it's done.